All right. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah. Look at you. Oh, my goodness. Hey, if you are new around here, my name is Mike Collins. And if you're not new around here, my name is still Mike Collins. I am uh, Ella, Clara, and Levi's dad, Marie's husband, and for the next at least four and a half years, I get to be the lead pastor here at Solid Ground Church, and uh, we go in five-year cycles. I have no plans to leave, and if, uh, if they don't vote me back, they'll have to drag me away, kicking and screaming, but that's another thing. There will be no dignity involved. That's another topic for another day. Today, oh my goodness, I, I'm looking out at you guys and I'm just saying like, okay, if you guys, uh, especially middle school, where are you at middle school? Oh, sixth grade or seventh grade. Ooh, I like that. I like some joie de vivre from the middle school. C'est très bien. Your enthusiasm made me want to speak in French, so thank you for that. Middle school, before we, before we get into today's talk, uh, real quick, we are going, uh, we have, uh, for Solid Ground Youth, we have Solid Ground Youth Camp coming up January 26th through 28th. All the information about that is at sgbic.com. And if you can't remember that web address, no problem. Just Google, just do a Google search for Solid Ground Brethren in Christ Church, Rancho Cucamonga, uh, in between uh, uh, Hermosa and uh, the other one that starts with A on 19th Street, like the, and then our church will come up. So it's just that easy to find, and you can register online. And uh, if you don't have a home church, um, our youth service is every Sunday at 10 a.m. <laughs> yes. So our, our church, we believe in not just having like the, the, the grown-ups and then the kids over here and the youth over here. Like on Sunday morning, we want everybody all together. We do special stuff for the kiddos. We do have a youth life group that is meeting next Wednesday. And if you'd like to come and hang out with us up right up here on our campus of Solid Ground Church and Alta Loma Christian School, uh, or uh, middle schoolers, you can take out your cell phones and text the word youth to 909. Just kidding. I was just seeing if anyone would do it. Um, or you can uh, reach out to us on sgbic.com for information about when the next youth service is, because we're ready to go in 20. 20- 24. Now, there's something very serious I want to talk to you about this morning. Very serious. Something that happened and is still happening on the second best coast in the United States of America, the Atlantic coast. We live on the best coast, the Pacific coast. But this is very serious. Preschoolers, listen up. You! I'm not pointing at anyone in particular. It's a very important story that connects to your life, connects to my life, and it's been in the news. So I need to play this very serious, dare I say dangerous story from the state of Maryland. Yes. Here it goes. Please pay close attention. Or do I have to turn this thing on? Oh, look. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, this is serious. How does it go forward? I am. Do I have to lean to the right? Officials in Delaware posting these pics of pot-bellied pigs online telling you to watch out. They say there have been significant increases in the number of pigs running around the neighborhoods in rural areas. Officials say most of the pigs start out as pets. The owners mistakenly believe they are teacup pigs, and they think that they'll stay small. That's not what happens, though. Instead, they can grow up to 200 pounds. State officials say if you own a pig and need help housing it, contact the Delaware Department of Agriculture. All right, Kathy, we're watching out for pigs. We're watching out for snow. It's just, uh, it's a weird week. What about pigs in snow? Hey, when pigs fly, it'll snow Maybe. here, I guess. I don't know. That sounds like something my daughter would want, and we get stuck with a 250-pound pig. Take a- All right. As a recap, there were some well-meaning people in Maryland, and they believed they were buying a cute 
little teacup. Pig. Pigs are smart. Your science teachers can tell you that. Pigs are actually, if you keep, they can't, they like to roll around in the mud, but you can keep them clean. And they're little and tiny. But imagine if you were the one that welcomed this little cute <laughs> teacup pig into your house. You name it. You name it something cute. Like, like, uh, like, like Muffy. That was my dog's name growing up. I know. It was very intimidating. You name it Muffy, and you feed the pig, and you snuggle the pig, and it's cute, and it learns tricks, and it learns to respond to its name, and it's, it, 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 you don't have to walk it because it's even better potty trained than a dog sometimes, and it's just this wonderful thing, and then it grows up into something that looks like this. <laughs> Down, Fifi, down. Bad pig. No pigs on the couch. Bad pig. Naughty, naughty. That's a big difference between little tea. That is not a teacup. That is a dump truck. So this is elementary school, preschool. This is what the news story was talking about. The news story was talking about people who, who just got, they thought they were getting this little thing. It's going to be fine. It's all cute. It's all cuddly. We're going to love it. And then one day they wind up with a pig that's almost as big as their couch. And they go, I don't know what to do. And then they, they, they let the pig go out of their house and they never let it back in. But here's the thing with pigs. These things, they get big fast. These these kinds of pigs, they make other pigs very quickly, very young. And in this island of Maryland that was off the coast of Maryland, legend has it, I don't know East Coast geography very well. <laughs> these pigs, they started have, making other pigs. And after like a year, the, there was just pigs everywhere. And then the, the pet pigs kind of knew how to, how to be, they were, they were, they were chill. They, they knew how to, okay, get off the couch. But the pigs that had never been in a house, they didn't know these pigs. Some of these pigs had never been around a human, so they would chase them. Some of these pigs started chasing other people's dogs and cats. This was, there were farms on this island. They started eating the farmer's crops as they got bigger and hungrier. They started eating and chasing the chickens of farmers. They started destroying people's property, their front yards, their backyards, and the place. I don't know if you've ever been to a pig farm. You guys, I've driven past one in New Hampshire. That's another state far, far away. It stinks. I mean, it's stinky. It's a pig farm. So this whole place is getting destroyed. It stinks. Everyone's afraid of these. Because when these pigs, when they're out in the wild, they start to grow tusks again. It's this most amazing adaptation kind of thing. When they're, when they're in a farm, they kind of are like this, or they're pink, or that color. But once they get out in the wild, they start like, they grow more hair, and they grow tusks, and they get meaner. And so now, I showed you that very serious story of them saying, all right, the officials have to step in because they're doing something. And I saw this news story a while back, and I started thinking, this is a lot like being human, whether you're three or four years old or whether you're 13 or 14 years old, there are things that come into our life at first that we think, I got this. It's no big deal. There are thoughts that come into our head that we think, oh, I might entertain that thought a little bit. I might do that later and it'll be no big deal. I'm not hurting anybody. There are things that we can do at first that seem like a little bit. That's like, you know what? It's just one time. I'll do this, and as long as nobody finds out, it's cool. We start lying to ourselves, and it seems like this little itty-bitty cute little thing. It's just one little white lie. 
Or, you know, I, I said everything that I said was true. It's just that there were more true things that I didn't say so that the person believed something other than what happened. And if that makes sense to you, you should get like dojo points or something today. Yeah, exactly. And so life is a lot like this. No one wakes up in the morning. No one gets up on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, pick a day. No one wakes up and goes, what am I going to do today? Let's check the to-do list. Ruin my life. Okay. (laughs) No one wakes up in the morning and goes, what's on the to-do list? Mm, Ruin my marriage. Okay. No one does that. No one wakes up in the morning and says, oh, what am I going to do today? Oh, go steal a bunch of money and wind up in prison. Awesome. (laughs) No. No one, hopefully no one does that. But check this out. How many of you, uh, raise your hand if you've heard of the book of Proverbs. Okay, you've all, good job, Alta Loma Christian School. Everyone's, it's a book of wisdom, especially written for young people like you. In Proverbs chapter 4, this has probably been your memory verse at some point. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says, above all else, guard your heart. Everybody say, guard your heart. All right, so this is what it says. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. There's a lot in this little wisdom statement. And in in the world of following Jesus, when we talk about the heart, it talks about the things you want. A fancier word for it is your will. When I, when I proposed to my sweet Marie, I got down on one knee and I said, I love you with all my feet. Oh yeah, heart, sorry. I forgot. I didn't say I love you with all my feet. I said, I love you with all my heart. You're my treasure. Will you marry me? Because I wanted a life with her. In this book of Proverbs, the the writer here is saying, be careful what you want. Other places, Jesus says, um, wherever your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Whatever you give your attention to, that's what you wind up loving. And this says, guard the things you want, things that, that you give your attention to. Guard that because everything else flows from that. And at the beginning, we may think, oh, I want that. And it's, it's just going to stay little. I know I shouldn't watch that on the internet. I know I shouldn't do this thing in secret. I know I shouldn't say these things about people or to people I shouldn't say, but it's just a little thing right now. But this writer would say, oh, watch out. Those things, they grow. They don't stay little and cute. They grow and they overrun your relationships, your classroom, your own thought life, and they can make your life even worse than a big, stinking pig farm. Guard. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Guard your heart. Is anyone here from Mount Zion Baptist Church in Ontario? Pastor Kennedy, anyone go to that church? No? Okay. You go to Pastor Kennedy's church? That's great. You know, he teaches karate. He teaches karate on Tuesday and Thursday nights. And guarding your heart is a good idea in a fight. Now, we're all peaceful people here. We don't get into fights. But if you were in a fight, like in ancient days, in medieval times, most of the warriors, they would wear a shield on the left arm because it covered their hearts. Anyone here left-handed? Give it up for our lefties. I love them. All right. All right. And also, uh, it's basketball season. Watch these people on the basketball court because they're going to their left, not to their right. Guard your heart. Because out of everything, everything that happens, you gotta, this is where it starts. 
in so many people as you grow up. We think that, that, that behavior is all God's after. But God doesn't just merely want good behavior from you. God wants something for you. Jesus said, I've come to bring you life, to give life, and to give life more abundantly. Eugene Peterson does that same, that same verse, and he's, he, his take on it is that Jesus says, I've come to give you a more full and better life than you could ever dream of. So guard those little things where you're tempted to bring those little piggies into your heart, into your mind, into your life into your habits, because they ain't teacup piggies. They grow, they grow. And it's not just for you. There's this uh, scripture that Peter wrote. It's a, uh, it's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. He says, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles, because that's what we are. Our real citizenship is in heaven, but that's another, that's another sermon. He says, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Remember, guard your heart. You and I, we're in a battle. And the enemy wants to take us out, but they don't come up with, the enemy doesn't confront you with massive temptations. It starts small 99% of the time. Oh, it's just this once. Oh, no one will ever find out. Oh, everyone else is doing it. But Peter was inspired to write this, and he says, hey, 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 hey. I urge you, abstain from those sinful desires which wage war against your soul because, there's a, there's a reason. He says, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. This is bigger than you just being well-behaved. Someone else may find freedom on the other end of your obedience to Jesus. You're not merely guarding your heart just for you. When you guard your heart, other people benefit. Other people see the light. Other people who are hurting. Other people who are lonely Other people who are just doing what everyone else is doing see, oh, there's a better way. There's a better way. And they can actually find freedom. This is not just something for you. God wants something for you and for other people too. So starting out this new year, a lot of people in uh, in January, middle schoolers, you probably know this, you've probably heard the word already, New Year's resolution. Yeah, you've heard new and people. So at the beginning of the year, people make New Year's resolutions. They're going to do something to improve their life, something to grow. That goes along with ALCS. We have a growth mindset, but we don't have to wait till January to do it. Can I get a good amen? amen. All right, good. I don't know why I got in a roll there, but seriously, this is a great time to ask the Lord to examine your heart. Ask the Lord to bring to your, to, your, to your memory, is there a time where you've had a bad attitude? Is there a time where your parents or whoever takes care of you, is there a time where they've asked you to do something and you didn't do it the first time? Ooh, I'm, I'm poking at you now. What's behind that? Scripture says, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Watch out for those little things because those little things grow bigger. And we are in a battle for our souls and a battle for this world. And and Jesus can protect you. The words of Jesus in in the Lord's Prayer. You ever heard that that term, the Lord's Prayer? It's It's when people said, hey, Jesus, how do we pray? He said, when you pray, pray something like this. But in there, in Matthew chapter 6, Verse 13, we can, we can ask God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Not just deliver us from evil, but from the one who wants to take you out. 
by keeping our eyes on Jesus and guarding the things that we let into our hearts. So let's start this new year by praying this prayer. And I'm going to pray. So you don't have to, if you don't know all the words, that's fine. I'm going to pray it. But I want you to join your heart to this prayer because this is really close to Jesus' heart. And as we, as we I know we, we started back yesterday, but we're still technically at the beginning of this part of the school year. Let's start it off with a clean slate. And as, as, as we pray this together, if you have any little things, little sins, little bad attitudes, little things in there, release those to Jesus. Say, I'm sorry, Jesus, please clean my heart. And the good news is that God's mercies are new every single morning. And as good as, as you and I are at messing up, as good as you and I are at sinning, God is even better at forgiving, which is awesome. Because you and I need a lot of forgiveness, right? All right? Don't be religious, just be honest. We need forgiveness. So if you would please bow your heads and close your eyes and just join. Uh, why don't you put your hand over your heart for this as a way of joining your heart to this prayer? Jesus said, when you pray, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners uh, to be seen by others. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Dear Heavenly Father, we declare that Jesus is Lord. We ask that every good thing that's in our lives would take its proper place behind Jesus of Nazareth. And we ask that any bad things in our life that you would remove them from us, that you would, you would help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to follow you so nothing would get in the way of the young women and the young men and the, the, the men and women that you dream for us to be. So we surrender our lives to you. In the mighty and strong and powerful name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Well. We are getting ready to uh, dismiss. Do we have any other announcements? Okay. Listen to your teachers for instructions. And everybody, have a great day. Bye.